Introducing the newest addition to our fishing series, the Sea Art Flex. Taking multi-species fishing to a whole new level. This 21-foot, 15-degree V-bottom multi-purpose fishing boat is constructed from 125-gauge aluminum inside and out. The revolutionary 60-gallon live well system is designed to recirculate cool water from the base of the built-in rear deck ice chest. Other unique features include a sonar black box mount onto the trolling motor foot pedal recess, dedicated wireways with a clean wire harness for your electronics, eight and a half foot lockable rod box, plenty of bow and stern deck storage, fold-out boxes with tackle trays, a 41-gallon belly fuel tank. Ride comfortably with air ride seats and keep your rig looking clean with the onboard wash down pump. This is the first boat designed to accommodate virtually any type of fishing from the coastal bay areas to the inland lakes and rivers. Additional options include the premium sea deck floor, shallow water anchor brackets, a swim ladder and either a urethane or camouflage finish. Take fishing versatility to the next level with the all new Sea Arc Flex. Hey everybody, Monday night, 7 o'clock, we're live on our Twisted Cat Outdoors podcast, presented by Sea Arc Boats. Uh, we have a special guest on tonight, didn't win this past weekend in Fort Smith, Arkansas, but got a top 10, actually 5th place if I'm correct, I should know that, but um, which we're going to go over that tonight, go over some points. Again, we just finished stop number 4 out of 12 tournaments, that's a lot. Um, we, still have, we still have a lot left, though. So next tournament is going to be Milford Lake in central Kansas. And uh, we learned a lot about Kerr and the Arkansas River down in Fort Smith. It was an awesome event. Um, and like I said, we had a ton of fun. 33 boats um, from seven states. Uh, really fun. So if you have any questions about anything past, present, future, Twisted Cat, catfishing related, ask in the comments. We'll get those answered. And without further ado, if I can pronounce this correct, let's welcome Colton Riordan. And I nailed it. You nailed it. Awesome. So welcome to the show, and you're wearing that dang hat that you wore this weekend. But it actually was good luck, obviously. It's going to be my new trademark. Uh, you know, so Jordan Lee has that hat, says this lake sucks or something like that. It's kind of where I got the idea from. And then he also has a hat that I bought that says, find your own fish. So, um, well, yeah, I like man. Those ones so, that hey. say, live scope ruined this lake. Yeah, I like that. Well, welcome to the show. Thanks for jumping on. Again, it's been, like I said, a crazy weekend. It's a, almost an eight-hour drive for us to get down to Fort Smith um, and then an eight-hour drive back. So, um, me, my mom and dad left Thursday morning, um, got down. Actually, we left and had to like take a trip real slow. So we stopped in Hannibal for about an hour, waited for a storm to pass through because there was a lot of hail. Drove to almost Lake of the Ozarks, waited another like an hour and a half, let storm blow through. And then got closer and closer and just, it ended up being almost a 12 hour drive, which is brutal with your mom and dad. I mean, not really. They're pretty good. <laughs> um, but it was a fun trip. And then when we got down there, you know, had a lot of black or had a lot of fun. And then, you know, we were kind of back and forth on Liz is a ton of help, as you probably see at some of these events. I mean, she just does a lot of stuff. So she's in her last semester of teaching, which is a big deal. So she can't miss any days. Uh, Rhett had been sick. We'd all like got the bug this last weekend through the week. It was fevers up and down. Rhett was out of school. Um, but I said, Hey, I really kind of would like you to come down. So they got out of school three 30 Friday and drove the eight hours, got there about 1230 and then, uh, got ready for the show. 
And then we've seen you all fresh and early in the morning at the bakery district for live well checks and uh, registered a few more boats at 33 teams. And then you guys got to go from there to pool 12, 13, 14, and then 15, which is Kerr uh, Reservoir. And then fish from seven to three, five fish, two over 33 under. <coughs> all fish, uh, all catfish species are the same species in this event. You know, flatheads don't help or anything. And then uh, not as big a weight as I expected or I was wanting. Because <laughs> um, Dominic Pellegrino is kind of the one that talked to me a little bit about this lake, him and Lance Ludke. And uh, we made it happen. But like we were talking backstage, this event was unique in a lot of ways because you're on the line Oklahoma Arkansas you're in a you're in a city where you got to have uh everybody got a permit Saturday morning to actually carry live fish in your live well to uh Fort Smith at the bakery district and then once you weighed fish if fish are caught on the river they had to go in a tank and if they were caught on a lake they had to go in another tank and then Miller Fisheries we hired they came in and took those fish back which is awesome because they take good care of the fish they help to string the weigh-in and all that but uh i guess you're new into the tournament so go ahead and kind of before we kind of ask your thoughts on this event kind of give us tell us kind of who you are your background and then kind of how you are how you got to fort smith i mean what led you in such a fast track to fort smith yeah yeah i'd love to um I, again i'm colton riordan i uh just started catfishing about eight months ago, um, July of last year. Uh, me and my buddy Lalo, we started, started. I had a 2001 Triton bass boat and uh, two stroke. And we were bass fishing a little bit. So I wasn't very good at that. And uh, when we decided we wanted to go catfish one day, didn't have any gear really, a couple Walmart catfish rods. And uh, we actually bought some rods from Hatchet Jacks, the bait shop here in Little Rock. And uh, it was actually Mad Cats, actually. So, looked cool at first. Um, showed up to a ramp in Little Rock here and <coughs> seen a bunch of boats lined up. It was 6.30 in the morning. Seen a bunch of boats lined up. Um, one of those guys that we first talked to is Jerry Foreman. He's a real good friend of mine now. Uh, definitely taught me a lot. He also fishes off a bass boat, so I didn't know what was going on. And uh, they said it was a catfish tournament, and we were going catfishing and asked if we, we wanted to fish it. So, yeah, yeah, we'll fish it. And uh, just we zeroed out just all day, struggles, no trolling motor, no nothing, just trying, right? And uh, just nothing but struggles, motor cut out on us. And Clyde... Clyde Hood's tournaments have a trash fish pot, so we still had our bass poles on our boat. So we were trying to get back and um, bass fishing as we were going, too. Um, no spot lock, no nut. We didn't have nothing, all right? And uh, didn't catch no bass either because we weren't very good at that. And uh, got back to the boat ramp, took my cowl off. Um, some wires came loose, cut my whole motor out, put it back in the water, didn't catch nothing. And went back to weigh in, and man, everybody was so nice. Um, just would talk to you, discuss everything with you, and didn't no judging. You know, uh, we did a bass tournament a couple months before that, and man, everybody was real. They weren't very nice people, and um, and it was you know they wouldn't talk to you. They kind of looked down on you, and uh, didn't much care for that, and. Went to that catfish tournament and everybody was so nice, just so pleasant to be around. Just kind of rolled with it and uh, absolutely fell in love with tournament fishing. That was where and I'm, I'm competitive by nature and love that. And, then, you know, through the grapevine of meeting all these people, fishing these tournaments, you meet other people that got other trails and met Jamie Bardsley, started fishing his trail. He's helped me out tremendously over the years uh, or the eight months and uh fished those two tournament trails last year i actually uh fished your tournament last year at keystone yes my so dad. I, that, that was another thing so i remember you like it was yesterday you'd called yeah. me uh, once or twice about the tournament and you're like hey i'm from arkansas i'm new and yeah you were all excited on the phone and you were going to go all the way to keystone lake 
And I think just you and your dad, right? Yeah, yes. And you were asking about maybe live well size and all that. And I said, come on, man, let's have fun. And yeah. I think you really enjoyed yourself. I did. Uh, I did. I had, had a good time. Um, it was it was great. Motor issues again. Two stroke. Apparently there's a fuse I didn't know about. Found it though. Um, we zeroed on that tournament and uh we, you know, just my knowledge has grown every tournament. I learned from my <laughs> mistakes. Talking to just everybody, just reading maps, weather. Um, I'm to the point now, you know, watching your podcast and you know, fishing fuel and all them, you know, I, I'll start looking what the cows are doing when I'm driving to the river. You know, oh yeah, you can see me and Clyde looking for deer, anything eating, anything, you know, like they're eating there, the fish are eating too. So hundred percent. If people are smart, they would be taking notes, which this is a, <laughs> this is my fishing notebook right here. It's empty. Uh, <laughs> but I'm telling you, if you look at even tournaments, you know, you take this tournament and you go and you just just print out the week of the weather and mm -hmm. look at the changes and you go to the Alton tournament and you and you you can start putting a pattern together and well, maybe the fishing wasn't so good for a lot of, I mean, Alton was a rough, Alton was a rough win and really Keystone or Kerr, Fort Smith was, was not, like I said, I, I think the weather played a factor. I think that the water temp going up and down. Um, I know some other fish, actually, I talked to Dominic this afternoon and he sent me a picture of, I'll have to confirm it, like two other big fish that were caught and these anglers didn't get in the tournament. Um mm -hmm. So I like, I'm really, I hope we go back there next year. I'm really excited to see as it grows, but I know there are bigger fish there. You know what I mean? 55 was our big fish, but I would have loved to have seen something bigger. But if you take that way in and you go back to Alton, I think we had a better way in this weekend than we did at Alton. And a lot, a lot of people caught a lot of fish, some mm -hmm. 30, some 40. I mean, that's yeah. a big deal when you get 40 fish in a day. So, yeah, I, f I feel like, you know, the 13 we got in the Arkansas River, it's that's, you know, that's a good day on the Arkansas River. <laughs> oh, you know, 100%. Um, we had great and, and the water quit, though. The water quit too on you. Uh, it, so didn't, it, never, it, it never started. Uh, when we got there, we checked the forecast on the, uh, uh, the Arkansas Dam app and, um, when we left the hotel at you know four thirty in the morning, said it was running twenty six thousand. I was like, "Cool, awesome, it's perfect." But we planned on anchor fishing the whole tournament. We figured with all that rain, they would keep the dams going. And uh, we got there; it was zero. They had nothing opened. So, me and Clyde, I just you know, Clyde's he he like he he's okay with pulling boards. It's not his go to thing, you know. It's and it's it is my go to thing and. He's got the knowledge and the years, and, and I, I learn a lot from Clyde every tournament. I learn a lot. Yeah. So, but when I looked at him with no current, I'm like, man, we might have to pull boards. He looked at me, he's like, yeah, I think so. And man, the first 20 minutes, it was a lot of rocks, a lot of snags. We were fighting it. And that first fish, man, just it after that, it just rolled until, you know, uh, I think it was 11 30. And then they opened up five of the locks or five of the spillways and that current was too much to pull in and there was a boat in the anchor spot. So we went down river, started pulling around the first bend of a sandbar and did that for an hour and a half. Didn't get no hits over there. And uh, then the we noticed the current was gone. There was no more current. So we went back up to the dam, finished out down river and man, we, we had a good day. We had a good day. We, uh, had great unders. We had some really, really solid unders. And, and explain uh, explain a little bit about the unders because you know during the way and I was talking a lot about unders and obviously the second to last boat to way was our second place team JT yeah. and Justin and and Robert, but they had really good fish. Mm -hmm, but their yeah. unders, which I might have said the word are terrible. And JT, I'm sorry, I didn't mean it like that. <laughs> But, you know, and their unders, they maybe had 10 pounds, you know what I mean? Not much compared yes. to some people that had that 14, 15. I mean, there was a lot of, some fish had big bellies, some fish were mm -hmm. long. I measured one that was like 31 inches and it was maybe, I don't know, it was, it was a small fish. But, you know, it, unders are a huge part of it. Yes, you know what I mean? yes. We had a tw 29 and 7 eighths inch. You know, it was literally. You were one of the two boats that were really close, I think. And I have the really measuring good. board from, you know, parks. So yeah. I, I, we were, I mean, we checked it twice. I, we pinched its tail together. We, 
it's not at 30. You know, me and Clyde were like, it's an under. I'm like, all right. And uh, we had, I think that one weighed in at 11 pounds, 11 something. We had a 10 and we had, I think a nine. I think it literally just rolled down. And uh, they were just real solid fish. We just kept calling them as we, you know, they kept getting, the unders kept getting bigger. So, and then at about two o'clock, we caught our second over and that's what got us to call uh, a seven pounder and keep our good unders. So what, when you come into the weigh-in, I mean, obviously we're live. Are you watching the weigh-in live as you're in the weigh-in line? Um, no, I was driving mostly. Um, so are I, you I, like, are you thinking like you got a good bag? Like you're going to, this is going to be like, what are you thinking while you're in the weigh-in line? So I, I know a bunch of the anglers in your tournaments, you know, the 33 boats. I know there's some, probably some of the best in the country that were fishing your, your tournaments. Let's be honest. JT's an awesome angler. Uh, Brian St. Emma's awesome. It was just, it was, it's awesome to fish against those guys. I really, really enjoy it. That's, you know, just getting to socialize with them a little bit. I told Clyde whenever we got our, our limit, you know, we were guessing around 70 pounds. Um, I said, man, it's, it just ain't enough here, okay. you know? And, uh, we got there and then my mom, she was actually watching and she said, I think somebody has 107 pounds. I was like, yeah, makes sense. You know? And, uh, to be honest, I thought that was JT that weighed in early or something, you know? Uh, then I think Kevin was in front of me, two boats in front of me. I seen the fish he pulled out, Kevin Parks. I was like, ah, those look good, you know? And, uh, but we actually went and parked after we weighed in, we went and parked, came back up. And I think Brian had the score, the, uh, link on his phone. And I asked him, he's like, you guys are in fourth. I said, like, Whoa, <laughs> we didn't, we didn't know. We just honestly didn't know. And then, you know, you mentioned it in the, on the microphone. I was like, Oh, wow, we are. And then, you know, JT came in and knocked me down to fifth. So yeah, it's no. okay. I'll tell you what, JT, I mean, again, kind of being new in the in tournament stuff, he is, I mean, He's for what he did last year, he did really well. You know what I mean? First yes. time, and I don't know a lot of the history, but I mean, first time with Twisted Cat, which is a tough trail, mm -hmm. did really well, made the championship, had some good finishes, even going to the Mississippi River the first, for the first time. I mean, caught Giants on in Crothersville, had some issues. Really just I it seemed like me and JT talked a lot last year because it was always something weird going on, like the the waterness gas and Cape Girardeau and stuff like that. But I'll tell you what, he's made a statement this year. He really going has. to Ozarks, you know, first time on that lake, doing what he did, got second, and then also going uh here, and this is his home water. But you know, I think he caught those fish together in the same so one one thing I did notice on the lake is it seemed like a lot of anglers that had a good fish or two had them at the same time or real in that same area so i know some people lost fish and that's what you were talking about mm -hmm. i hate i mean i always give people crap you know always the one that got away or it was the hook or it uh, came unbuttoned um but it seemed like i heard of it a lot this tournament and i don't know if it's because the transition of the water temp being in that low 60s a short bite i know give us a story that you had because you said that you lost one in you're thinking about changing your, you're actually, you're making a rig right, right now. Yeah. I was just sitting here making it while I was waiting. So we, uh, we had two or three, we seen two of them. They rolled the top of the water and just spit the bait. It was, we literally seen them. They just rolled the top. We were fishing shallow, eight foot of water. So as soon as you, you know, put any attention on it, they come up to the top and they just spit the bait. We couldn't, <laughs> couldn't do nothing. You know, uh, they looked like some good overs. They look like it, but, from a distance, they all look like good over. So what I did as I was talking to Brian St. Emma, and uh, he was talking about his trailer hooks and his trebles. And I was like, man, that's a really good idea. And I was sitting at my desk and I have some wire leader and some trebles sitting here. So I started putting together on my Nocturnal Nation, so there's some wire leader with some trebles to actually, you know, get this in the back of the bait. So, and long enough where they don't swallow it, but short enough where it's effective. So that's, I haven't tried it yet. Again, I hope it works. We'll see. And I use all my own crimps. It's what I like. 
Hey, you're you're trying it. You're you're yeah. being you know uh, innovative. I mean, that's what it takes. Is is every little thing has you know when it comes to tournament day and you're fishing against the anglers that are out there now, mm-hmm. you need everything to go your way. Every mistake you make is going to cost you. Yeah, every 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 one of them. You know, I'm not saying it costs us the tournament losing those, but you know, it would have helped us for sure not yeah. to lose those fish. But I'm sure everybody lost a few. So it's just part of the game. Yeah. Yeah. And so. what's weird is I, I heard that so many times this weekend. Is they the fish so. are short biting right now. They um I we I even tried to downsize baits, but even when I did that, they just <coughs> wouldn't, you know. What were you using? What was your bait? So, like, again, uh, shout out to Nooner, man. Skipjack was the bait Saturday. I had fresh shad. I had fresh eel. Skipjack. Skipjack heads is really what we caught our fish on. So, that was that was the best. <laughs> yeah. So, I caught one on a a whole shad that, you know, I just reverse fillet it, cut the backbone out. I call it the Clyde special and make like it a flapper that. bait. Clyde special. The Clyde special, man. Caught a, caught a bunch of fish on that. So he just cuts the backbone out with a reverse fillet and lets it flap in the water. Really helps when you're dragging boards, when you're pulling a little bit of, you know, a little bit of movement. So when you're, let's talk about bait real quick. When you got bait Friday night from Nooner, how are you are you getting that bait just throwing it in the cooler throwing ice on top of it or are you laying all of them on their back so the blood goes what's your yeah so, does it matter to you um if i'm catching it for a tournament like catching bulk like nooner did the way he did it putting it on his back was great um but after i have what i use on my my ice chest is i have rock salt mixed with my ice and water so as soon as that fish hits it, it's an instant freeze. So I don't have that blood was already in its back. I didn't really worry about it. I just threw it in there and it instantly froze where it was at. So I didn't give it a chance to thaw at all. Nice. Yeah. Just go get some ice cream salt. Yeah, and like I said, you uh I mean you talked that night. We had a little mm-hmm. interview, didn't we? Yeah, yeah. What if I have that here? Caught, caught me <laughs> off guard. Well, it's some, uh, just something kind of new I'm I'm working on. Let's see if it'll uh, – if I can play that here. <laughs> oh, God. Hey, Colton Ryan here from uh, Little Rock, Arkansas. Over here in Forest. Uh, Forest, Twist and Counter. We're doing it on Arkansas River. Um, What's your favorite thing about tournament fishing? Uh, competitiveness. Mm-hmm. I like being competitive. Uh, do you think tournament fishing makes you a better angler? I think it makes you invest more uh, time, patience, and uh, what you're looking for. It makes you really focus more. Tomorrow, do you think you'll have a five fish limit? I uh, will have a five fish limit. There you are. Yeah. yeah. That's pretty cool. So that's uh, something I'm going to start doing is kind of getting some stuff before leading up, you know, talking about the event with each angler. Um, but that's cool. So I wanted to show you that again after, dude, uh, that, and like I said, fifth place, that's impressive. You know what I mean? Your fourth Twisted Cat tournament, your fourth, I mean, you're, it ain't like you've been doing this 10 years and you fish again. Like you said, there's some really, really good anglers yeah. that fit the trail. Um, yeah. I just did points this morning. And I mean, it's like I said, they're really things are starting to get really tight yeah and it's only we're only four out of 12 you know so yeah it's getting good it, it's 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 weird though some of them like 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 to mention dragon masters i use their stuff yeah you know and it's 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 <laughs> weird fishing against people that you're buying their merchandise to fish against well them there's with. A, there's a lot of anglers in this sport as it's still a young sport that had they're building they're being innovative and building these products making these products because mm-hmm. they're out there fishing you know yeah. coming up with new dragon uh stuff or rods or hooks and all that stuff and um i know jt was using the stuff mm-hmm. um so yeah that's what jt just said the fish are super full full of snails and i don't know if you notice on live 
there were snails everywhere on the ground in my weigh-in bucket on the table with my ruler there were snails everywhere <laughs> so <laughs> there's a lot of those fish and that's something to learn too like is it this time of year this water temp are they really eating snails i mean like i said what, what what's really unique with being a director is you get to see like a lot of what the fish are puking up or you get to see in live wells and stuff like that and talking to the anglers and this tournament, I had never seen so many snails, and it was multiple boats, you know, like I said, all over the place. And then some of them said, yeah, my whole live well is full of them. So that was kind of interesting. Yeah. <clears throat> I didn't I, – to be fair, I, there was a lot going on for me. I didn't notice much of any of that. I was just happy to put fish in the scale. Yeah. So majoring wasn't a thing. You you really understood that. Uh Obviously, were you nervous about that one that was real close? Or you're like, yeah, um, this is good. No, I mean, we got the same scale, so. Well, it's not, or, I mean, on the ruler. So some people always say, you know, the, the, the fish grew or the fish relaxed and gained four inches. I mean, most so of I, the time, mine just shrink, all right? I've never yeah. had the pleasure of one gaining anything. Yeah, I had to pull up a text and, uh, you know, so about 9, 30, 10 o'clock, I get a text from Brian and he says, dragon master team has broke the curse and i go what do you mean and he goes we got a toad and i'm like okay <laughs> and uh as it goes on that toad is a little smaller and he, then he <laughs> then he i think he says yeah maybe it's not as big a toad and then it was like 35 pounds which 35 pounds is a really good fish you know what i mean that's a good so, fish yeah uh, and they've had a rough go like i said i got the points pulled up here um you know, this is their first good finish. They've got a couple 100. So, I mean, that's, they're excited for that. So. Yeah. Yeah. That, Other about, than one, one fish can change everything. You know, it, your all whole it takes year one. tournament, one good fish. Yep. Yeah, that's, that's, I tell everybody that it takes one fish to beat everybody. When you're catfishing, it's literally one fish. Well, unless it was Alton and yes, Jordan Collins, it takes a little bit more than one, but he had, he had 102. And then it'll look like an eight pounder, and then the third one never, never got. So the way he I was just that, shy of first place. You know what, what I mean? What would he have got without the hundred and two pounder, though? That's that's how I look at that. He would have had some hurt feelings. Yeah, probably. you know, I've had those. Yeah. So, but that's cool. Whether you win or not, you catch a hundred and two pound fish in a tournament. That's something you'll never forget about. I think he's gonna get that fish mounted. Uh, that's pretty good. But if I want, if I'm going to catch a, a PB, a, a, a giant like that, I want to do it in a tournament. That's a once a in a lifetime fish for most 100%. people. Yeah. That's, that's incredible. hundred percent. You know, that's something I was, when I was going through the pictures from Tom this weekend and I always kind of go back to like Facebook and social media, Instagram, where you see, and I'm not calling any specific people out on their pictures, but you know, when, when you see a good fish on Facebook, it can be how the picture was taken. Was it on the, the googly eye uh, screen or whatever? But, mm -hmm. you know, these fish that we caught, like big fish was 55. They were some good, big, giant fish. And some of them, if they were on Facebook, might be 70s. You know what I mean? Like I said, <laughs> they were just some good fish. Um, yeah. I don't know. O overall, I was still very impressed with the weigh-in. Yeah, no, uh, I'm I'm happy with the the river produced for a lot of people too, which is you know that's that's awesome. The Arkansas River is so hit or miss. <laughs> yeah, it, it's it's on or it's off, and I think it was on for quite a few people. But I think ma majority went to the lake, if I'm not mistaken. A majority did go to the lake for sure, and I think so. you know it's just this time of year. You know they had a little bit of that shallow water, but then I I did hear a lot of people talking, and I fished the lake once. I heard a lot of people talking. I'm laughing at a comment. I heard a lot of people talking deep wood on Kerr. The deepest I think I seen when I was out all day was 16 foot. Now I'm sure there's some deeper spots. Um, so I'm kind of curious. Catfishing catfish picks. <laughs> oh, Monty, that's a good one. I like that. Um, gosh. Uh, but yeah. So have you have you actually fished Kerr? Uh, no sir, uh, we we didn't get a chance to pre-fish or anything. We we drove in when we we got there at the captain's meeting. When we walked up, we just got to Fort Smith, so 
never fished that body of water. <laughs> just I fished the Arkansas River in Little Rock. So John said 41 foot at the dam. So John, were you fishing near the dam all day? Were you fishing kind of wood? Maybe kind of give us a little hint on that. You too, Monty. Uh, were you fishing deep wood or what's your thought? Steven, I'd ask you what you were fishing, but we still waiting for you to weigh in, old, old son. <laughs> Steven was given, uh, who was he giving a lot of crap to? JT or he was betting somebody big. And uh, Steven was a lot of fun, but uh, he might have had too much fun before the tournament, I guess. I don't know. John said he could see the dam all day. Were you fishing wood or could you tell what you, what you were on the bottom? What was working for you? JT, I can't remember if I asked you if you were fishing deep wood or not. Let us know in the comments. <laughs> Monty was dragging six foot average. So it's pretty shallow. So like, you know, that's what's fun is everybody can, you can fish the river, you can fish the lake. You can fish it shallow, you can fish it deep, you can drag it, you can anchor it. You can do so many different things. <laughs> um, and it looks like everybody did up a little different, you know what I mean? So. We caught ours between 8 and 15. That was our average depth. 8 to 15? Mm -hmm. In the river? Uh, yeah, right. It's, it's close. And no to current. And no current. We were, I was literally dragging circles in, in the restrict, like right by the restricted area signs. Yeah. I was just dragging circles. Eight to fifteen. So, what so Dragon said one and a half foot to six foot, and then John Williams is deep dragging the ledges. So um interesting. And I think JT said his biggest fish came out of three foot of water. Yeah. I think the fish were moving pretty good. The the, the temperature went from fifty nine to sixty two pretty quick throughout the day. So and I think that's a Good average temperature. So here is, I don't know if this isn't a great picture. Here is another. This was this fish was caught on Kerr uh, tournament day. Dang. That fish and this fish. And this fish. Jeez. <laughs> but he said these guys just didn't want to get in it. Uh, he said they just didn't feel like spending the money that they had just, we we're going to do a little fun fishing trip. So I understand that. Yeah. Steven said he let his 50 pounders go so they could stay healthy for next time. <laughs> um, so Eric Zimmer says, Colton, what's your go-to rig pulling boards? See a lot of hang, see a lot hanging in the back if you like to share tight lines. So he's just uh, kind of asking, what's your go-to? Kind of maybe show us. I had I had two different like ones. Is that your rigs hanging up back there? Yeah, I was just making them yesterday. Just, I like to, you know, I get bored. So here is. I don't know if you guys can see that or not, but there's this, this is uh, Dragon Masters three ounce inline weight. There's be the top right here. And oh, I don't know. Don't tell me you got a double hook rig too, like JT. Oh yeah. I, oh well, that, that's what these. I'm are gonna have for. to. We're gonna. I'm gonna have to go over the rules. We might have to ban this. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> and I just put a trailer hook on it too, so it's almost three. So how is so? Let me ask you. So when you're dragging, start from your first. Start from your crane swivel on the top to your to your main line. Yeah, now, so you I, don't I have, run, that, that doesn't get hooked up anywhere. Show us that first. So this is where my my eighty pound braid on my 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 reel yeah. goes right here on this three way swivel. Yeah. And then I just put an inch and a half peg float on there, just just enough to keep it off bottom, and it just. But that's not getting hung up. Your your first hook there doesn't ever try to get wrapped around your weight at all. Uh uh. Nope. Haven't haven't had an issue with that once. So I thought uh, these bass guys had a lot of money in their rigs. I mean, you got probably thirty seven dollars in that in your hand right there. Well, I didn't say this sport was cheap. <laughs> so is do you always stay with that size uh on, um, the, on your first hook? So yeah, I I'll run eight or ten. I'm not 
it depends on how the bite's going with if I swap out or not. I got all my rigs pre-made with eight, tens, sixes, whatever. I if the bite's short, I'll I'll drop down a size. So, but if it's if it's going okay, I'll I'll keep my eights and tens on there. Um, okay, on the so bottom, I have going. a ten. So, eight up top, ten on bottom. Do you will you use different baits on those hooks? Will you use will I, I one will. Will the top hook be a head and the second hook be a midsection? Man, I'll run shad and skip. I'll intermix head, body. It doesn't whatever they want is what I'll give them. If I get my first two fish, if they're <laughs> both on skipjack, then I'm sw I'm swapping to skipjack. If they're shad, I'm swapping to shad. If it's eel, I'm swapping to eel. So. On Where a tournament day, I bring eel? enough for everything. Where do you get eel at? Uh, Oriental Market here in Little Rock. Huh. Yep. Fresh or salt. Try that. It's got its time and its place. Like when you're waiting for spawn and pre spawn, that's when it's a pretty effective bait. So they, you know, they go through and eat the little fish, and catfish are predators too, so they eat the eel. Yeah. Lalo says, bigger hook, bigger fish. That's not always true. <laughs> Lalo was the, the guy I got started with fishing, catfishing. Yeah. So. Uh, and then I, I do said, run normal peg flow dragon weights, too. Okay. Eric said, thank you. So as far as just normal dragon weights or setups, double hook, those are just two eights right there. Just a little, I call them squirrel nuts. Just a little rattle, peg, two and a half inch peg well, float, chain yeah. swivel, and about a 24 inch leader line to my three wave, which I hook my dragon weight up to, to the leader as well. Pretty simple effective rig let me ask you this because you got a lot going on when you're turning do you have any special so like when i'm dragging and i'm and i'm doing a turn and i got let's say i got two long lines maybe three and then i got boards do you do you run them like a your long line really long where when you turn you might have to reel one in a little closer because uh, if that inside. stuff gets tangled up that's a disaster so my inside <laughs> one that i usually have straight out the boat I, I usually crank it in where it's just just barely touching bottom. But I'm so like every one of my reels has a line counter on it. I am if I'm dragging 50 foot, I'm dragging 50 foot on every one of them behind my boards. So I don't I don't adjust them at all. So that way they don't get tangled. So if you're that's what I try to explain to people. You have, you have to be accurate with that footage. Otherwise, they will get tangled, especially when you hook up to a fish. So if you're not, if you know, if you're on your middle board, if you have 80 foot out and then you have, you know, 40 foot out on your outside board and you hook up on your outside board, that fish is most likely going to get tangled up with your inside board. But yeah. if you have <laughs> the same distance behind the boards, you're, Every now and then I do get caught up with a fish, but not very often. That's what, uh, oh, I love Andy Allen. He said, bait and tackle shops love those setups. <laughs> Jeff Rowe, uh, he, uh, he says, ask about those eel heads. And I, I don't, I never use the eel heads. They don't, they don't do nothing for me. They don't, I've really? never caught a fish on the eel head. Don't know why. I just and it creeps me out, so I just get rid of it. I'll be honest, I've never used an eel before. I've caught an electric, I don't know, I caught some weird slimy eel like 15 years ago because I lived on the river, like before I really catfished or anything. And it was terrible. I couldn't get it. The it took forever to get that stuff off my hands. But other than that, I don't know. I've never used an eel ever. It's like a layer of skin. After you touch it, it puts like a layer of skin on your hand. And uh Normally I wear gloves, but ever since I've been fishing with Clyde, every time he sees me put gloves on for the eel, he makes fun of me. So <sighs> I can yeah. picture Clyde making fun of you too. Yeah, yeah, no, he's uh 
You know, and I, I hate to do this on this podcast, but even when I go catch shad with a net, you know, I'm not fishing that day. I really don't want to smell like shad all day. So I usually oh, I put hate. gloves on. Right. I just I absolutely hate having shad that shad smell on my hands. I hate right. It. So I put the gloves on, man. The the the, the crap he gave me just almost wouldn't even hang around me. So Cutter Cutter says, uh, what's your take on pulling bait suspended under a planter board instead of on bottom, like in the warmer months? <coughs> so have you done any of that? Uh no, and I'll I'll tell you why. I don't like suspending baits. That's um uh, our waters here, the level, the bottoms aren't they're they're just too uneven. You know, um when you're suspending baits, you want to keep your bait what two or three foot off water, but especially using and you have to have current to 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 plane your boards out with suspended. You got to have enough current to get you know because you're going to be in one spot with your boards. To get them out, you need current to get them out, and then you don't know what the actual depths are. Are you on bottom? Are you five foot above where you need to be? Are you, are you out of the strike zone for a catfish anyhow? You know, I don't personally like that. If I have to do that, I just fish bottom. I'll put it, you know, if I have to, I'll drop a weight on a planter board and send it out there where I know it's on bottom. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but normally if I'm, I'm not going to suspend fish normally. If I'm in a tournament where there's not a six rod limit, if it's a eight rod limit or a unlimited rod, I'll suspend off the side of my boat if uh, just to get an extra rod, rod in the water. So that's, I don't yeah, suspend I with boards. Cutter, I've, I'll do it sometimes uh, bumping, like I'll have, I'll dead stick some planter boards and then have it, you know, 10, 15 down. <clears throat> I know a lot of people are starting to do it more often bumping. Um, like I said, there's a lot of anglers are putting time in to just become better in every little way they can. You know what I mean? So if you're bumping, I hate dead sticking straight to the bottom because it seems like I, I'm always fishing gnarly stuff. And that gets hung up and you just can't really bump good. So, like, just having that extra bait out there, kick it 10, 15 yards off the boat, and then have it 20 foot deep and know that it's not going to get hung up just mm -hmm. to have that extra piece of bait out there. So, that's that's my answer. But I, I definitely know some people are definitely dragging a lot of suspended stuff on the rivers anyways. Um, Lala said, drum fish smell the worst. I don't know about that. They're pretty raunchy. That's a bad thing about this sport. Who whose boat was? Oh, it's Brian's boat. I don't know if he's got like some shad up under the seat or something, but man, I don't think I'd fish with him in his boat unless he cleaned it. Like it was that bad. I think he even realized it because I go, "What's that smell?" <laughs> it Maybe wasn't like. I mean, it's it been in there a while. I can tell you that. Maybe he's just numb to it now. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, so Chris Taylor said that he was 18 foot with suspended baits at 10 foot. So, um, it was cool to see Chris Taylor and, and his son do well. And like I said, he's been fishing for a long, long time. So yeah, glad to see him kind of jump in a little bit with some twisted cat. No, I mean I didn't. I, again, I don't suspend that often. Um, so I mean. That's, I mean, it works. Uh, yeah, I am not confident suspending at all. I hate it. I would rather just, you know, power pull down and, and cast mm -hmm. out or or bump or drag. I just, I I'm not suspend. confident bumping yet. So that's what draws the fish, kind of like chumming Clyde. <laughs> I can see Clyde as he's typing in these comments. He's laughing out loud. Yes, that, that's him. <laughs> yeah. Oh my! Yep. Yeah. Okay. Be so, <clears throat> let me see if I can pull. Let me see if I can pull this up real quick. We're gonna we're gonna just go over the points real quick. Okay. Let's see. Let's see if I can make it big. Okay. Can you see that on your screen at all? Maybe a yeah, little bit. It's little. <laughs> it's little, I know. But so 
after these four events, we got Lake of the Ozarks, Grand Lake of the Cherokees, Alton, and Fort Smith. And we've got eight tournaments left to get into that last one, the Helena Championship. But Aaron Gerald, that lucky dog, is still with 732. Um, he is in the top. So the best you can have is 800 points. So now you kind of understand how this works. If there was only four tournaments, this is who would get invited right here. But now as we go to Milford Lake, our next tournament, everybody will, it'll, so if you fish five, if Milford's your fifth tournament, your fourth worst tournament in this calculations will drop. Um, so for example, if Aaron Gerald or, Hey, Monty, you're, if you're on here, congrats, you're in second. Let's say Monty goes to Milford Lake and he gets a, which I hope he doesn't get worse than a 166, but let's say he gets a 165. Nothing will change. He'll still have 726. But let's say he gets a 180, then the 166 will drop and his 726 will. I'm not great at math on the fly. His, his It'll go up. So you now you see these people. So right now, if it's it's you've got your your top 13 boats have got four tournaments in <clears throat> last year i wanted to say we took we said it was going to take 600 points to get in and i think it's going to take i would say it's for sure going to take 700 probably more um as you look at this you've got a lot of people that on the i mean you got lance Ludke, tyson and dominic they got a first place, a seventh place, and 180. And what's interesting is you might not see them again until, let's say, Keystone Lake. Yep. So if you take a team like this, it's got a first, a seventh, and like a 20th, which is really, really good finishes. And then they come in with a top 10 in Keystone. But by then, they're maybe down here in the hundred, in like a hundredth place. That's three anglers are going to shoot way up. So that's what makes this really interesting. As you look down here, you know, Tyler Sapp and, and Doyle, they've got two events in. they got a 197 and a 174. So as we move further, you know, we're kind of getting to Milford Lakes in Kansas. And then you've got Pekin, Perryville. So Pekin is going to be the Illinois River, a lot of uniqueness with that event. And you got Perryville, Mississippi River, Muscatine, Mississippi, Flatheads and Channel Cats. You got St. Joe, Missouri River, Big Blues, Burlington, uh, Channel Cat, and Flathead, and then New Madrid, Big Blues, and then boom, Keystone Lake. So I think you're going to see really after Milford and Pekin, things really start to fall in place with some of these northern anglers, these northern Iowa, northern Illinois mm -hmm. anglers starting to get their third and fourth tournament in. Um, Milford's going to bring some of them guys like Kayla McAdams, um, Chris Baker, where are they at down here? <coughs> there they are. So right now, like Chris and Caleb have got three tournaments and they got a 197 stellar finish and a 191, and then they got a hundred. So, you know, they get another tournament in replace that zero with whatever i know they're going to milford you'll see them at saint i mean they're going to probably fish three or four more tournaments so a lot of things are going to start to change um pretty quick so like brian said it's too early for point predictions um but you're not going to be able to have skunks that's for dang sure just because i think i know several of these people down here that are actually fishing for points and just haven't got you know their third fourth some even their second tournament in but you can scroll down so far in four tournaments, we've had 355 anglers. Uh, and I'll share this after the podcast tonight on the main Facebook page, and it'll be on the website. <coughs> so if you go to just a cat, why does it not show? Let's see. Okay. So if you go to the <clears throat> website, you've got your, <clears throat> your top where you got home, shop, registration, rules, contact, about. You'll be able to just click right here, and then that'll help you understand how to get there. You know, that'll, that'll take you to the current points. 
Um, and then again, registration. And definitely some of you that are watching, here is an easy way to, to look at results. Obviously, you got Lake of the Ozarks, Grand Lake, Alton, Kerr, Milford Lake's the next one. But if you just want to look at like what the results were at Alton, you just click the Alton. <coughs> Derek, that's a good question. Derek asked, what is the cutoff for the championship? And it's the top 50 anglers. So if you look here, if you go on your phone or on your computer, you click, you're going to register for a tournament. So you have about the tournament to the right. You got registration, rules, hotels, and then you click live results. And that's going to, that's going to give you your results for the event. I'm just Alex, reading. I do got a question for you. Yes, sir. What, um, what happens if, say, a, a person gets into the Classic, right? But it, his partner doesn't have the points. Is he still allowed to take that partner? Yes, as long as he's fished the events. Three events. Okay. <laughs> so here is, so just real quick, I'll just show you. So here is the Alton way, the results. So you just click here, and then you see all the... 84 teams and their results. And it also says some stuff over here. So that's kind of a quick way to do that. And then again, let's drop back to the points. And then Derek, that'll so this will answer your question, Derek, on on points is if you look at the highlighted blue on the um on the far left where it says top 50. <laughs> these are the top 50 if we cut it off today this is your top 50 anglers that get in so jason hamilton and morgan reed would just make it but bo brady and dylan lawson which i know they're going to fish several more uh and they got two decent finishes a 186 and a 170 so uh, <coughs> and then you got caleb and uh kevin dierks you got a lot of uh teams that ain't got really fired up yet some of them are uh what do you call uh not fair weather fishermen they just ain't they just ain't it's just been a little too cold for them so now you start seeing them so hope that answered your question eric on that colossal cats mr aaron gerald i hope you're still pumped you're in first i'm fishing every tournament this year going to put in the work <coughs> Aaron's came a long way since his first few tournaments. Steven, you're you're having too much fun with us. Do you know Steven? I think I met him in Fort Smith. I think uh I think he was this guy wearing overalls. I'm pretty sure. No shirt, just overalls. Sweet style. I don't know if I remember that, but I'm pretty sure that was him. I'm, hopefully he comments and lets me know if it's the right guy. He will. He said he was talking a lot of smack, too. Hey, look what, look what Taylor just put. Oh, is it my wife? Yeah. Uh-oh. There's no telling. She said uh, that's there's nothing wrong with a fair weather fisherman. <laughs> <laughs> She'll be she'll be back on the boat pretty quick. There she is. Yeah, you're right, baby. There's not. He said, "Yeah, that's him with the overalls." <laughs> yeah, overall. I like shorts. that guy. He had overall shorts. Uh, overall, real shorts nice guy. I, I don't know that I really. Yeah, I don't remember those, but overall shorts that's kind of a game changer that's kind of like the dad shoes and socks is that like overall jorts at that point yes i don't know it's something kind of hey if it if it's what you're into it's what you're into he's from <laughs> arkansas it's it's fair so what and and talking about arkansas like i said as, as twisted cat over the years this is the 10th year has grown what what's your thoughts of the event especially like at the bakery district you know we talked about having Oklahoma, Arkansas license and all that stuff. Did you like the, did you enjoy the weigh-in? Like where we kind of put it where there was already an, a, an event going on and you got, oh, I thought, to see, there was a lot of 
people watching. Oh, that was fantastic, man. That was, uh, it, it was stressful, but it was awesome, man. Having a crowd like that, the mayor coming up to us when we were oh, I just forgot about the mayor. Yeah. Right. When we got done weighing, it's like, he was talking to me and I was like, no, Alex is over there. <laughs> he came up and got on the mic. Yeah. And right then, the- then, he, then I, then I looked down and he's walking down the way in line. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. That guy was awesome, man. It was a uh, man. Everybody was upbeat, real nice. It was a uh, man. It was just an awesome tournament. Awesome turnout. So, yeah, no, it was it was it was really fun. Yeah, I looked fun. uh Thursday and there was 19 teams registered. I was like, wow, that's <laughs> that's not that many. And I thought there'd be around 30. I didn't think there'd be over 30. So it was a good turnout. Yeah. Yeah, and no, it was a blast. Yeah, yeah. I thought there'd be more drunks, honestly. There wasn't. More what? A lot more drunk people. No, to be honest, like we were, you know, I always, everybody always asks, are you fishing? No, because I'm setting up all day. But, uh, dude, there was a lot of people asking, like, what time are they coming in and all this. There was a kid, Brody, there. I'm trying to find one of his pictures. Were you around when I called him up? Oh, yeah, yeah. He got the the picture with <laughs> us at the end. I mean, that kid was, like, fired up. So I remember his parents, they came up to me and I was setting up. It was probably like 1230 and they wanted to go get some, go to a vendor and get some food. And he was worried to go because he didn't want to miss the weigh-in. I'm like, no, we'll be here. And then I, I called him up. I'm seeing, here's a picture right here. So I called him up and I said, hey, come check this out. <laughs> huh. So yeah, that's that's uh him right there his mom back there but he's actually he he bent down and let's see if i can touch that fish i thought i had right there that's awesome so i was i said come on up here check out this fish i think that was monty's big fish <laughs> i know that was brian thomas maybe but i said don't get too close to his mouth that he might tear your hand off <laughs> uh, but dude he was pumped and then uh Charles Crook came in shortly after that and gave some rods out, some meat hunter rods, which that was really, really cool. Man, Charles is just an awesome guy. That guy, <coughs> one of a kind. There's Liz fist bumping uh, Justin after they just weighed. There's Chris and Hunter. There's the winners right there. Some yeah. good looking fish. Studs. And like I said, this town was so cool. Like this, they did this big mural. And there were some workers over the years at this feed mill that they had some people like fly in to like, this is all hand painted. Um, So that town, like I said, Fort Smith has got a lot to offer for anglers and families coming in. There was a lot going on that weekend. um, And it was just a lot of fun. A lot of fun. (coughs) That was the way in line, you guys coming in. I seen if the mayor was in that walking down and looking, talking to you guys. <laughs> and then obviously this is the crew, minus yeah, Brandon are- went there, and then and Miller's, but my parents and Tom and Shauna. I this I couldn't do it without this crazy crew right here. No, you guys, you guys There's were a lot of, yeah, a lot of behind the scenes. <laughs> But yeah, no, it was a cool town. I'm excited. Like I said, uh, we have a lot of cool events this year. Perryville, Peak, and Muscatine. You know, so in Muscatine, which I don't have one up here, they actually brew a beer with the Twisted Cat Outdoor label on it that everybody kind of collects, and they'll, they'll do an every, like, one different every year, um, which is pretty cool. That's awesome. Um, yeah, Colossal Cat said it was a cool town. I really appreciate yeah, this. Sorry. Sorry. Go ahead. I thought I really appreciate the security you had for our trucks too, so we could enjoy the event for our boats and everything. That was awesome. Yeah. I just so like that's the thing is you've got to as when you're running a tournament and especially in like a town, a, a big city where you're you're gonna park away. That's something I as an angler, you know, you learn about as a director, like, hey, if I'm an angler and I'm gonna go, I just fished all day and I got all my crap, my cooler, my drinks, my bait, my rods. Mm-hmm. You know, somebody could easily grab a bunch of stuff 
<coughs> so I worked with the city to find a lot that was close by that they shut down. And then we just hired security off duty police where they just from, I think it was like three fifteen to seven fifteen or whatever that window I put, they, they were there watching over. So once you parked, you didn't really have to worry about like somebody going and breaking in and stuff. And that is huge. Mm -hmm. It's all those small details that, you know what I mean? Like, which this one was, I would, I'll have to admit, this was the hardest one I've ever probably put together because of all that stuff from the polygraph guy. He couldn't get, I don't know if you heard me, like he couldn't find the way to get there. Cause it was tough to get in there. Once you got downtown Fort Smith, there was a lot of road closures. So we had to get him in, get him parked. Um, so you had the polygraph guy, um, the fisheries, you know, the, the Corey and his partner that, that hauled the fish for us. Mm -hmm. um, the meetings with the state of Oklahoma and Arkansas to have this tournament and make that even work. Uh, lots of little moving parts, the bakery district, the city. So <laughs> I am just one small part of, of the event just to try to help put it together. But there's a lot of people behind the scenes that help do that. Um, well, I think I can speak for all the anglers. Um, I think we could all definitely tell how much work you guys put into coordinating this event. That's why I uh, sent yeah. you that text, you know, that night. I was like, man, that was, that was a great tournament. Yeah, I remember. I think I was reading that text, and I was a half asleep, and I'm like, I'm going to text him back, and I finally texted you this morning, I think. But, yeah. man, I was uh, – we were whipped. It just – you know, from getting up in the morning and doing a live old check and – you know, people always complain, why do you do a libel check? That's so stupid. This is 2024. Well, there's a couple of reasons we do libel check. Number one, it's just we've always done it, and it kind of keeps, you know, let's say that you come through and you have some bait that maybe is not legal. I get to look in and say, hey, you know, you can't have that bait. Or if you have, not that, I don't think anybody's dumb enough to, like, put a catfish in there. I don't think. You know what I mean? Uh, you never know, man, man. <laughs> But I've just, over the years, I've fished some tournaments where there wasn't a libel check. And it just, I don't know. There's just, I don't know. I, I like when everybody kind of starts at once in one place. I don't, I'm not a huge fan of trailering. A lot of these events, we kind of have to trailer yeah. as it's grown. But, you know, it's also the city funds these events. So if if we don't do a registration or libel check, then you might not stay in that town. And, and supporting the town is how we come back and build the event. You know, like what we're going to do in Perryville and in Pekin. Really, all these events, definitely Fort Smith. I mean, Fort Smith, like I said, had a lot of um, cool things. Nooner said he's retiring from bringing bait. Um, <coughs> but that's the <laughs> whole goal. You, is, like like I was showing you and, and telling you earlier in the backstage, is it's the, the, the catfishing tournament is just literally one part of the event. Yes, it's, it's all focused on the tournament, having fun, going to be competitive, talking trash the night before the week of and all that. But it's also Thursday night hanging out at the host hotel at the restaurant and bar or Wednesday night, all going to Texas roadhouse or mm -hmm. Friday night at the night. I don't do a mandatory captain meeting because some anglers that got to travel 10 hours and they can't get off work till late or early on noon on Friday. I can't, I don't want to force them where they can't fish. So, you know, <laughs> They can make that drive if they want to come great most most people that i've disqualified have been because they didn't come friday night and they didn't understand a rule um nick wyckoff james gordon are a perfect example of that i didn't disqualify them but they they lost three thousand dollars because instead of weighing in five fish they only brought three they didn't realize in jeffersonville indiana it was a five fish limit so it's little things like that but you know and then we also gave a 300 dollars entry for a, a bags cornhole tournament. So every angler gets every angler that's there Friday night gets to shoot one cornhole or one bag. If you make it, you move on. And Koi Sneed, I don't know how he did it. I guess some luck. I don't know he was that good at the cornhole. So now he's got a free $300 entry to an upcoming uh, event, which is a big, I mean, that's a big deal. A big, huge deal. But again, it's about that camaraderie where you're hanging out. And that's what's fun. And then that's like what you said. That's when you you talk to Brian and JT about their rigs, and then you start understanding it, and learning, and that's what becomes you become a better angler. You yeah, know, I going learned, to these I learned all my dragging and my rigs and stuff came from Clyde and Jerry Foreman. You know, Jerry, he's pro staffer, 
you know, meat hunter and uh, spread them planter boards and, you know, uses all them. It just, I learned a lot. I just, just pay attention. You'll learn with this whole industry. Caddy Shack said it's, it's 2024. You never know what someone will put in a live well. <laughs> now, my son will put a rubber duck in people's live wells. So he is smooth about that. Better than and, a uh, It's been known to, yeah, it's been known that the rubber duck is is a good luck charm. So, uh, I thought that was a Jeep thing. It was a Jeep thing, and then in uh, in Jeffersonville, Indiana, last year, last year, two really good anglers, Rob Benningfield being one of them, had a rubber duck floating around, and Corey Peterson. I'm like, what's this about? And I don't know. They said some kind of like luck. So Tom our photographer jumps on Amazon and buys literally like a 500 or some crazy big box. And he puts it in the trailer <coughs> and we start throwing them out. I think I got like four or five in my live. Well, which you know what last year it did me really well. That and having Liz in the boat, I won a boat that won some money <laughs> tournament. Um, JT must have it. Rep my, if JT, if you don't have one in your live, well, Rhett probably threw it somewhere. Maybe it's underneath a battery or something. You can't find it, but you got to have a little luck in there, man. I'm telling you. Caddyshack, if, if Rhett puts a duck in my live well, it'll be glued to the boat. <coughs> I've never heard the rubber ducky thing. So what about the banana? You put a banana in a boat? No, nah, I said it's better than a banana. Oh, no, I didn't put banana in anybody's boat. All right. Don't tempt me. Jamie said that he's going to have to get an autograph this weekend. Oh, whatever. So where is the tournament this weekend? Uh, <laughs> I believe it's at Lake Dardanelle or the river below Lake Dardanelle, the Arkansas River. So I think he gives us the option to either fish Lake Dardanelle or the Arkansas River. JT says he's got two rubber duckies. <laughs> so what do you think weights will be? Same thing, still five fish, two over three under? thirty. I think Jamie does a three fish. Oh, you guys know Arkansas. I keep forgetting. Arkansas, they're like uh, – whatever you want you take right basically there's no over unders just three fish three biggest um arkansas and illinois to get need to get their act together a little bit i think in illinois you can fill your boat up as long as you don't sink it as many catfish oh. as you want oh wow we have we have limits here <coughs> oh I you think, do? Uh, yeah we have limits uh i think i believe blue cats is 10 per person um flatheads are 10 per person and channels are 10 but you're allowed an additional 10 channels so you can get up to 20 channels a day what about commercial if there's a limit? i don't believe there's any limits for commercial fishermen to be honest with you and clyde will probably be able to answer that better than anybody i know he reads the arkansas game and fish manual like every day so jamie said Three biggest fish. Colton only gets two. Probably JT said he'll see you at Dardanelle. All right. All right. Man, I, Let's go. If Dardanelle wasn't so far. It's a great day. I, if, probably... I didn't have, if, I, if Rhett didn't have a basketball tournament. Lake Dardanelle weekend. is great for catfish. Uh, the Dardanelle Dam is probably the second best dam in Arkansas. Just behind Pendleton. And Dumas. So we had a tournament, a bass and catfish tournament in Pine Bluff mm -hmm. two years ago. And it was actually not a bad weigh-in. It was kind mm -hmm. of a crappy time of year. I don't know if it was May or June or I can't remember what it was, but I think 80 or 90 pounds won it. <laughs> that's that's a lot for the river, to be fair. That's uh that's a big weight for the Arkansas River. Every now and then, somebody catches that occasional 40, 50 pounder, but few and far between. Jerry says he might come fish this weekend. Uh, he better come fish it this weekend. Jerry's one of those guys. You ever just <laughs> fish against somebody that, like, 
they're a really good friend to you, but no matter what, you want to beat them. I got a lot of those. Yeah, that honestly. Jerry's that guy for me. Like I just, you know, just got to beat them. Yeah, you know, and that's what's fun about tournament and being competitive is there's I want to go beat everybody. Like this <laughs> weekend, I'm telling you, like in the mornings. Some of you might see me like it hurts to check live wells and let you go. Like I want to go out there and compete, yeah. you know, and, and see where I end up. And like I said, when I go to these tournaments, I do a lot of side bets and that's like the $20 signed is a big deal. Like that's so, I mean, that's, that's fun. You know what I mean? And then, then you're kind of getting a bunch of tournaments. Cause now if you get your butt kicked and get 15th place, you might've beat Colton. So now you get a $20 signed bill and you, you know, you beat him. So that's pretty yeah. cool. <laughs> Jamie said his highest weight on the Arkansas River was 105. I've had a couple in the 90s. Jamie is a very good angler. Like I'll I'll never take that from him. He's really really good. He he's good. So Jamie was on on the 105. Is that those are all three fish limits or five fish? Probably, I would say three, yeah. So there, you're kind of, for, for Jamie's stuff, you're pretty close to most of his stuff then. Um, I can say I'm centrally located in the whole state of Arkansas. He kind of just goes around Little Rock for the most part. I think he has a Tishner one, um, a couple on the Mississippi, I believe. Yeah, three fish. So what would you say your home water is? Arkansas River. Like what? What part of it? Uh, Little Rock, Murray Dam, Murray Lock and Dam. And how is um, it? Terrible. That bad. It's. It can be good. Jerry, he caught a forty-one pounder there. The conditions were right. The spillway was releasing just perfectly. He got to walk his bait. You know, just it straight back to the dam. It was just perfect conditions for him. And <coughs> but like he said, it was just just a good day. It doesn't happen Do you, often out there. So what about like when the water, like let's say that the Arkansas gets a good flood and you got the the river just rocking. I mean, is that really turning on? Cause I can, you know, I'm, I'm kind of close to what you guys are up in my pool in the Mississippi. The more current, the better it is. Um, I, I could, I could agree with that. Yeah. The more current, the better. It, it definitely makes it better. Um, too much will hurt it, but a, a, enough. There's 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 too much and there's too little, and you got to find that happy medium medium on the Arkansas. I I think that's my opinion. You know, <coughs> we kind of all have our own methods of fishing, different kind of fishing techniques, yeah. and uh, too much is not good for me. Jamie said seventy to one hundred twenty thousand for current flow is good. So you and and back to what you said. You said that you are you're a river fisherman, not a lake. So, have you really given a lake a chance? I mean, you got like the most crazy dragging rig. <clears throat> like you might end up taking the Dragon Master name from Coy and Brian with the rig <laughs> that you got going. Okay, so like <clears throat> you got to give that a try. I mean. I think once you have a good day on the lake dragon, I think we're gonna have this conversation. You know, Alex, I like lakes. Uh, no, like you're lakes. absolutely right. And I just recently got into more shallower water fishing. I, I'm really, really taking a liking to really anything less than 20 foot. I'm really enjoying. I don't much care for deep water dragon, um, but I I want to go try. But the the lakes around here, which you guys fished in Lake Washita last year, right? The main problem, yeah, like, right. I think we hit it. I think we hit it horrible. Well, it's just a clean, clean, clean lake, right? It's crystal clear. I don't want to fish there. We got Lake Hamilton, which is still pretty clean, still really cold water, though. And then we got DeGray, which I've, I've only fished there once, got skunk, never went back. And uh, a lot of trees and stuff in the bottom of that lake, like actual trees, standing trees. So. Probably great for flathead, but I don't target flatheads for the most part. Well, I, 
I want to catch a state record eventually. In the next few years, I want to catch a state record. State record, flathead or blue? Blue. Just because I don't target flatheads that much. I, I think it would take an 80-pounder in Arkansas to break the record. Uh, be a 117-pounder to break the record for blue. I don't believe anybody's breaking the channel record. It's massive channel. That's out of Washita, I think. I think it is. Yeah, it's it's like a forty-four. I'm not quite one. sure they knew that was a channel cat because that's a. I think it was forty-seven, isn't it? Well, yeah, something like that. Forty-four or forty-seven, or just insane. absolutely massive channel cat. So, and then the the blue was caught on the Mississippi River. Still counted for Arkansas. <laughs> Oh, Andy, I'll have him loving lakes before you know it. Maybe. I got to have a redemption try at Keystone after Alex's last Keystone tournament. Well, we're hitting Keystone a little more than three weeks later. So we're going to have cooler water, and I think it'll be fire. It, it, Andy, you can you can correct me if I'm wrong, but talking to some of these anglers – Keystone should be a really, really good way in end of October. So I think last time when we fished your tournament, there was a real bad thermocline in that lake too, if I remember right. Yeah, right? Super, super hot still. Yeah. Well, didn't it didn't it roll over that lake? Didn't it didn't it turn over? It might have, yeah. It was it, it, it was that was a bad day. Jerry said one lake, one trip to Lake Texoma will change your mind about lake fishing. But you know what? And Colton Brunger said yes, he that Keystone would be better. You know, there was a tournament on Texoma in the way in, unless I'm wrong, it didn't look that great, which is kind of surprising. I don't know if Texoma is just not putting out like it was, or I don't know. What did that kid that caught that 105 pounder on the other day? What lake was that? Or was that a river? It was like a a kid caught 102 or 105. I'm not sure on that. Yes, Lake was turning over. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Andy <laughs> fished that tournament. I think he got second in that tournament for yeah. you. That was uh that was tough fishing out there. Yeah. It was very. Yeah. But it's a cool event. Yeah. It was all that that uh Manford was awesome, man. The whole setup, the weigh in on the water. I thought that was that was wild. So I'd rather do that than Spencer, Spencer right. said it was on Bugs Island. Ah. Hey, speaking of old Mr. Spencer Bauer, we missed you this weekend. Where are we at, old son? <laughs> I love his little picture there with his dog. <clears throat> Oh yeah. Where were you at? We missed you. We're we gonna see you anytime soon. Brian said Keystone was awesome. So Andy <laughs> said they had a sixty-five point four caught a few weeks ago on Keystone. That's a good fish. That's a great fish. Yeah, Les Thompson said that there there's a one oh five on the Mississippi. <coughs> So Spencer stayed at home, fished a tournament on the Coosa. How'd, how'd you do on the Coosa? Hopefully it was a big W. Do you know Spencer Bauer, River Certified? I don't think I do. I might have met him before. He runs a YouTube channel, uh, River Certified, and... <laughs> I want to say a joke, but I'm there or not. I probably watched well, him before Spencer. not knowing. Huh? I probably watched his YouTube channel before and didn't even know. <laughs> I watch a lot of YouTube. Spencer. Spencer, I'll call you after the show. Uh, Clyde watches him. Yeah. Jamie said he's out. He's going to get a good night. I think, Jamie, you're retired. It's 821. He's probably going to go fishing tomorrow. But Jamie and Charles, I think, got one of the best pictures of a twisted cat ever. Uh, a catfish, Jamie's holding, and then Charlie's got the dog. Yeah. Well, thanks for watching, Jamie. Well, uh, good luck this weekend. I'd love to make it. Who knows? We might. I might. 
I guess fun, if, man. Uh, if JT has a, a spot on the boat, are you fishing, you said, this weekend? I, I am. You're fishing it this weekend, yeah. Yeah, JT said he, he was too, didn't he, in the comments? Yeah, he said he had a spot in the boat. Well, come on down. Dardanelle's a cool town. Russellville, that's a pretty cool town too. Yeah, he said, yeah, it's bedtime. Yes, it was a classic picture. <laughs> What's Jamie? I gotta look at your uh trail events and see when what what tournament I can make, but uh I definitely got some on the radar, but man, my calendar gets keeps getting loaded up with more stuff. Uh and Rhett turns 10 years old tomorrow. Oh Can't gosh. believe he's gonna be 10, so Saturday, we'll, we actually, this weekend, we have like a party for them at the YMCA where we can, they can swim and play basketball and all that stuff. So everybody said that they got room for it. That's tough. I'm going to be watching kids swim, wishing I was fishing. But uh, next, next time, I'm going to do my best to make it. So thank you guys for that. <laughs> so what, what else you got on the counter this year? For 2024, you're, you're pretty new into the things. Yeah, you have like um, on the list you're really excited for, like a body of water you really want to go to. Keystone. Keystone. Just, just want to, just want to catch a fish in that lake. Don't care what it takes. So I'm fishing it April 6th with uh, getting hooked. Andy's trail. And you're, um, you're, it's, you got like a vendetta. Like you're gonna go. You're. I'm gonna go fish. catch fish. Yeah. I, I don't care if it's just one. If I bring one to weigh in, I'm happy with it. Um, just finish out your trails, get my, you know, get, get some good spots in, uh, some good, you know, some good weigh-ins, uh, fish Jamie's trail, the AACH Clyde's trail. I won't miss his trail for anything. It's the, the most laid back, just one of those trails, you know, when he says go, everybody's still finishing their coffee, you know, like we'll be out there in a little bit. That's, That's perfect for me. That's what I mean. I, yeah, coffee. Yeah, yeah. We'll get there when we get there. Don't worry. Um, and then I'm gonna fish the uh, Mississippi River uh, Trail as well. So they only have, I think, four or five. Uh, I think Jamie and them kind of split up their schedules to yeah. accommodate each other. So uh, those are really nice people over there. I think Jackie Swindell runs it. Uh, David. Yeah, uh, Jackie. Yeah, Jackie does a good job. Yeah, David, I think Magnus, I think he's the other guy. Super awesome people. I'd be happy to fish their trail. That you got there's a lot of good people down there. You got old Pop Pops and uh yeah, yep, yep, yep. Right. and Clyde and mm -hmm. all those guys. Uh great group of guys Earth. to associate with. All of them. Yeah. They're just great people to to be around. And you know what? A lot of them do wear coveralls. Yeah. Yeah, and congratulations. I know Jamie already left, but that man lost a bunch of weight. Good for him. Yeah. Yeah, he, he's he's doing good, man. He's retired and he's fishing. I mean, he, he just yeah. living the dream, really. He's living the dream, I'm telling yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. Claude, same way, man. Retired, <laughs> fishing, living the dream. Yeah, Claude, I'm 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 I promise you, I'm making it to one of your events. If you're gonna, gonna make it to one of Claude's Pendleton, April, April 20th, I believe. That's, well, so that's April twentieth. That's the one you can fish the Mississippi, the White, or the Arkansas. <coughs> I'm at Sea Arc. We got our invitation, Sea Arc Invitational that weekend. Oh, dang! Never mind, man. I've got his counter too. I just it's I'm gonna make it. I'm gonna make it. His Tar Camp one would be a good one. Uh, Morro Bay on the Washita River. That's a good one. Really, that uh, White River is a fun little river to fish. I fished that a couple years ago and. The White River in Clarendon's awesome, man. That's uh, that's the first time I met the Massengale brothers and uh, really realized who they were. Jeez, the fish they brought out—it's crazy. They went some good fish there, didn't they? Man, they did. They did. Was you know, the river running? It was running too. Sure. Yeah, was. yeah, it was running. And uh, first time, and and I remember Jerry's like, "Oh man, here we go." When they pulled up, I, I didn't. At that point, that was my probably my second or third tournament. I didn't know who they were. I I quickly realized who they were. So, um, good dudes though, like them. Oh yeah, 
Yeah. Awesome people. Yeah. Very good. Very, very cool guys. So but that's, that's my tournament year. Um, hopefully catch a couple more of yours. The miss some of the river ones. Um, just kind of have fun fishing tournaments, man. It's a, uh, it's a blast. Yeah. Perry, like I said, Perryville will be a fun one. I'm, I'm actually going to go down April 8th, April 8th. I'm going to go to Perryville. Maybe jump on the boat with Kirk, Lucky, and some chicken. And oh, at like two at like two o'clock that afternoon, they're having that the solar eclipse is gonna happen. Yeah. And in Perryville, my plan is to be on the water. We're gonna have like four and a half minutes of total eclipse. Yep. So make sure you fill your truck up. Yeah, they're maybe saying the, the gas stations are gonna run out of gas and prepping us here in arkansas for it yeah because you're in that same line yeah where you're yeah at. they say little rock's gonna double in population it's wild like the hotels like everything that's sold out some of them are like 800 dollars a night so airbnb is going for literally a thousand dollars or a night or two thousand dollars a night yeah. yeah so hopefully kirk lets me like sleep on the couch or something on sunday night i'm sure he's got a sea art man you know, <laughs> well, he does got an easy cat, so I guess oh, I can see on that. But, yeah, but how cool, like, to go fishing and ha as that happens, and maybe you got a fish on, or maybe it turns the fish on, or something crazy. Uh, so, we, we got, we got, they already called off work for us. I'm, I'll be on the water. You know, I think it's like what? Yeah, there's like no schools in the area. Yeah, nothing. I still got to learn about the glasses because you're supposed to wear the special glasses, or it could blind you. Or I don't know if that's true or not, but I don't know. I'm a welding inspector. I'll just grab a welding hood. And that'll work. Yeah, so that'd be kind of cool. So, yeah, so I'm gonna plan on doing that. That'll be coming up. That's probably the next time I get to go fishing, which is terrible. That's awesome. Um, I know. I don't know what's between there now. I guess it's only like two weeks, but yeah. So I'll uh, I'll be kind of heading out doing that, and then way making my way to Louisiana. Uh, <coughs> and then yeah, then after that, Sea Arc Owners Tournament's coming up, and a lot of cool things, man. Well, you got it. You got it going on for you, Alex. Your trail's doing good, man. You got a lot of things going on for you. It's uh, I'm glad I met you and glad I get to fish your tournaments. Yeah, it seems like it was just yesterday where you were calling me and you were so Nervous. excited. Yeah, about oh, coming and fishing, like you were pumped. You know what I mean? I love it, man. I love it. There's nothing better. Absolutely. So nothing tell, me better. About, tell me about the hat. Did you make the hat? Where did you yeah. find this hat? Custom made. You get on Amazon. Look up the the brand hat you want. They have these leather patches. You just type in what you want, kind of the design you want, and uh, yeah. just hit order, man. And uh, I just got so sick of the Arkansas River. Just it was just so hit or miss. I was like, you know what? I need that hat. <laughs> and it just I wear it for tournaments now. Hey, it was good luck this weekend, man. That's an awesome finish. Yeah, I need one that do says. You, this, do, you, this. do you think you've gotten better on the Arkansas River? Like, do you think as the next one year, two year, three years, you just start to kind of break it down where you can go out there on any given day and say, "Hey, this is going on. This is the weather. This is the water. This is the level. We just had rain. the The temp went up. I you can start pinpointing. You think that you'll start being able to gain that knowledge? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. After, you know, like I said, all, all the things I've learned from everybody, piecing everything together, the wind, the temperature, the water temp, the, the flow, everything, it, it'll come together for me. I, I do. It's very <coughs> seldom I get skunked on the river anymore, but everybody has a bad day every now and then. And, uh, but no, I, I a couple, another year or two, I'll have that river hopefully figured out pretty well. At least around here, and you know, I'm I'm one of those guys. I study my navionics before a tournament. I may not get to pre-fish, but I have my spots pretty much. You know, I'm gonna go look at this spot. I'm gonna go scan, see if there's any any signs of life. If there's not, I'll go to another spot. So side scan, down scan, whatever. If I see bait, see birds, yeah. another something around there, I'll target you know that area. So. That, that's how it goes oh. on the Arkansas every day. Every, you don't know where the bait's going to be. Kelby said, awesome job, which Kelby, awesome job to you. 
which I'd like to have. I'm going to have Kelby on one of these podcasts. He even said, just a bad day every now and then. Let's go with that for me on Saturday. So Absolutely. Steven was predicting to win the tournament by big numbers and came in. Well, actually, he didn't come in. I, did you come to the Wayne at least, Steven? He was there. He came to the Wayne. Okay. Yeah, I talked to him. So, <laughs> so and, you everybody, know what? I'll hey, tell you the words. Has a bad day. I'll tell you the words Charles Crook told me on on our way up there. We were talking to Charles and, and and Jamie, and you know, I skunked out the last tournament, and I was like, if I skunk out again, it's just going to be just awful, you know. And he's like, don't let me. I'm going to butcher it, but he's pretty much saying, you know, the any fisherman if he ain't getting skunked eventually. It's going to happen. Just get used to it, basically. And it made me feel a little bit better, I'll be honest with you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so. I remember the first few tournaments I fished. Like I said, Montalani, Ohio was one of my first. It was my first big tournament. I fished a few, like, local tournaments. Mm -hmm. I, went, I mean, that's like seven, eight hours from my house. Went there. <clears throat> didn't catch a fish. Didn't get a bite. I mean, for like three or four days, it was terrible. I didn't know what I was doing. I was with Chris Wallace and tournament day. I think we were sleeping at nine o'clock in the boat. We were both passed out on the, we had, I had an easy 200, both <laughs> passed out. And, but it was fun. And that's like what yeah. got me hooked and then learning, okay, well, these guys were like bumping and dead sticking. <laughs> and then we just kind of changed and adapted and, and went out and kept going and didn't give up. And, it slowly all comes together, you know what I mean? Yeah. And that's what we're saying. So and it's crazy to see how your tournaments, how the winners catch their fish, or how most people that place high catch their fish. Like Lake of the Ozarks, when you had it on December 30th, I'm pretty sure dead sticking pretty much was the best thing anybody did there, if yeah. I remember correctly. Pulling and dead sticking, right? <coughs> huh. Yeah. I mean, uh JT was dragging. Yeah, yeah, and I think most people were uh, just suspending their baits right off bottom. Yeah, we drug, we caught our five fish, but we couldn't get it over. Me and Sterling, mm -hmm. and then um, what was the next one? Oh, Grand Lake. You know, two foot of water. I learned a whole new rigging there from those 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 local people there. You know, the Oklahoma rig. I've never even heard of that. So, and then the next day, I started making my own and caught fish doing that too. So I don't know. You're making, yeah. Hey, you're making the rigs. I'm telling you that right now. I'm looking at the wall right now. So you like have a <coughs> actual hanger for your rigs on the wall. Yeah, I yeah, just yeah, just just all around. There were just here. We bought this house like a year and a half ago, and there was an extra room up here upstairs. Like, all right, use it as a like a game room slash lounge around. And then I have this desk, and I was just just I'll just sit here and. <coughs> I got all my hooks and everything right here. And so do you, what's your thoughts on rattles or like floats, demon dragons, all that stuff? What's your thoughts? They look nice. I don't, do I don't know if they the difference anything. between a, a, a rattle, a float that's a rattle or just a float. Uh, floats, the, the regular peg floats, just a regular <laughs> float. In my opinion, it works better. They they just work better, right? You get plenty of lift. I don't know how those peg floats actually lift my bait off bottom. I don't know. I mean, I'm I get less snags with regular two two and a half inch peg floats right here. Just a regular two and a half inch peg float. Just Amazon. <laughs> just that's. Jerry Foreman told me to get these and it's worked ever since. So I have my regular, you know, rattles, which these are just some of the four inch ones, but they make uh, six inch ones. And I, I, I would say those work better, but I don't know. I just, when I'm dragging, I'll keep it simple with my float. Now, if I just do my anchor rigs, right? Like a, Santee Cooper anchor style. <laughs> I'll use like a four inch peg float. So I don't, it just needs to keep my bait off. It's not moving. Just needs to stay off bottom. I'm not dragging. I don't need to go over a stump or a log with my weight. And I don't need this to go up with it. Right. The peg float will go up when my weight goes up. Yeah. So 
That's how I look at that. <coughs> Whole point of dragon is to not get snagged. That's why I asked Brian. I said, if you're not using Dragon Master products, dragon, you're snagging, as we said. His, his bite me floats. Those are actually, and those since those extra large ones came out, they work very well. So, and they're. They're they're good, and I even like his little rattling pegs <laughs> the, that you put in the ends. That's ingenious. Yeah, you know what's funny is, hey Brian, if you're listening or watching, I've not. Can I get some of those XL floats? I just placed an order floats. with him, like Come literally on. this morning. Throw some to your buddy, <laughs> Brian, Coy. I think Crickets. he's there. I think he's just not typing. <laughs> So, well, anything else you've got to you want to you want to thank anybody or? Uh... Yeah, just uh, you know, my local bait shop, Hatchet Jacks. You know, Stephanie and Jeff down there, they're great people. If you're running by Little Rock and need a good bait shop, Hatchet Jacks is going to be an awesome place for you to go. Um, Clyde, Clyde Hood, you know, Jerry Foreman, um, Jamie Bardsley, obviously. Uh, just great guys that helped me come a long way in the short amount of time. So I, if you're just getting started, definitely talk to some of the guys that will uh, have been doing this a while. They'll help you out. All of them will. So that's that's all I got. And my wife. Shout out to my wife for putting up with me and letting me do this. Taylor, that's a shout out. Yeah, that is a shout out. If so. you guys, if and I, I mean, it's it's September, but. We have a Jack and Jill. Oh, and then JT says JT Cat 10 Dragon Master promo code. JT. Good for um, you. <laughs> you get it, JT. Um, <laughs> we have a Jack and Jill. It's non points, but it's a really cool event. Uh, it's in Canton, Missouri. Um, it's a, uh, I think it's either a hundred. You think I would know I'm the tournament director, but it's like a hundred or $150 entry. 100% payback, but it's real chill. Um, and it's it's two adults, one male, one female. It has you can't have either, or or it could be one male and like a kid or whatever. But if you have two adults, it can only be two, and one has to be male, one has to be female. So you see a lot of father, daughter, mother, son, you know, and families. You can have as many kids in the mode as you want. Uh, so pretty cool event. What if uh, Clyde identifies? I've had some people try that. I have some people. I've yeah. had some people try that. It's 2024, Alex. <laughs> I know. Who's the cat, <laughs> though? Yeah, we don't do that identify as stuff. But uh, <laughs> Jerry said, Tanya, let's go. So, yeah, Taylor, you should say, let's go. It's fun event, and it's close to my house, too, so you can come hang out. When, 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 when I, is it? <sighs> September, um, <coughs> first, no, it's first week of September, September 28th. Let me, let me just look. Yeah. Just as long as it doesn't sure. coincide with, uh, Clyde's tournament, I'm down. We'll be there. Is it a pretty cool town that it's in? Oh yeah. Real cool. Okay. College town, Missouri. Uh, it's a pool right below my pool, so it's the last, the second to last pool that you can catch a blue cat on. Perfect. <laughs> this is again not a great big file, but let's I'll pull it up. So that's the schedule. So Kent, Missouri is August thirty first. Nice. Gonna <laughs> be hot. Man, that's a big schedule, though. So we just finished up Fort Smith. We got Milford Lake. Then we got Pekin, Perryville, Muscatine, St. Joe, Canton, which is a non-point event. And then Burlington, New Madrid, Tulsa. And then Helena, November 2nd, which we still got to talk with Jamie and that crew because I think they're having an event that same weekend. So that'll be kind of fun. We'll have the Twisted Cat Championship. Um, and then you got April 20th. We're at the Sea Arc Invitational in Wheeler Lake for Catfish. May 18th, we got the Crappie Invitational for Sea Arc. September 7th, Alton Classic, and June 1st and 2nd, Fishing for Freedom. 
a lot of things, man. Yeah, you got a lot going on, Alex. I uh, don't know how you keep up with it all. There, Cody. Thank you, Cody. He said August 31st. He knew before me. Well, he's the one that created the flyer, so. Hey, thank you, Cody. So, yeah, Cody, is uh, anything you usually see with Twisted Cat, any kind of uh, logo stuff, flyer stuff, it's usually Cody. Glenn sometimes helps, too, but uh, <coughs> Cody is the man. Yeah, uh, Cody's going to be working on Colossal, Cla Colossal Cat's logo sometime soon. Clyde, you know you're my favorite competition. Pink Pull Whisper over here. Is he talking to me? He's talking to me, isn't he? That's Taylor talking to him, I think. Taylor oh, yeah. said, good thing I have the stinky boys that run for their money. <laughs> <laughs> I have this thing where I have pink rods, man. It just... I don't know why. Just the pink hey, rod work. That's that's all that matters, man. As long yeah. as it works. Yeah. Not picky. Um, <laughs> so again, uh, well, thank you so much for being on the night. For everybody watching, again, we'll we'll have uh, Daybreak Media. We'll have a video. Hopefully, the next few days, we'll get that posted. All the pictures are posted on the Facebook. Um, the results are up. I'll post points tonight. Um, if you haven't, make sure you subscribe on YouTube and then give this video, if you're watching right now, a thumbs up or a heart or a smiley face. Don't do an angry face unless you just want to do an angry face. Yeah. Um, but again, thanks for watching. This podcast stuff has been going actually pretty well. I, I get a lot of people throughout the week saying, hey, who are you going to have on next week? And I've learned so much. And thanks for showing. You had an angler that showed me how to do this rig. And they sent a picture of a fish that they caught. So... <clears throat> The goal, again, like tonight, is bringing everybody value on just if you learn one thing from each night, then I then it, then I went. Then that's my goal. Um, and that's why I bring a lot of different anglers on. I know Kelly's on here. He won the tournament. I want to bring him on sometime. So um, just having different people. I know we're going to have Mitch with NBT Marine on at some point. Um, looking to have somebody with Power Pole. Um, and continue kind of having anglers on here to just give value to people watching. And as it gets warmer and we get some, uh, because right now it's dark out, but as it, the days get longer, we're going to start doing some Monday night podcast, hopefully on the water. Um, I'm definitely going to do one on the water Monday, April 8th in Perryville, Missouri during the, eclipse so you'll we'll be live as the sun goes away for four and a half minutes and maybe when we come back we got fish hooked up or something so that's awesome. uh that'll be fun and then hopefully we'll do some more live stuff we're gonna definitely do some some 1v1 aca stuff aca challenge um hopefully soon maybe even up in pool 19 we're not doing a fort madison iowa event this spring we're going to burlington iowa just up the river from fort madison but that's gonna be in september so maybe I'll talk Seth into going one on one, one on one against me or something for some uh, those cold water channel cats. But uh, yeah, I want to do some of that stuff. And again, it's fun doing this live stuff. I can't believe. I feel like I've been doing it about a year. We've we've missed a few Mondays for sure, which I hear a lot of crap when I miss a Monday. So sorry about that. Um, <laughs> Jerry said, "Let's do a one v one." So yeah, hoping the next one v one will be soon. Um, yeah, Kelby, we had a ton of fun, man. Just an absolute blast at Fort Smith and then letting anglers choose from river or lake. So, uh, great job. I'm going to have you on one of these Mondays if you want to jump on and, uh, yeah, man, Colton, thanks so much for being on. No, I appreciate you asking me, buddy. That's awesome. I, and, I, and, that's and like awesome. I said, when I, when I asked you, I said like, you're like, you're a perfect example of somebody just that was like me 11, 12 years ago that just got in and like took off just we're gonna do it, it. Just like, Go it's like what jt's done i mean jt's fired up and he's doing well and that's what it's about so um and then also uh obviously you we can't do it without the sponsors this whole mm -hmm. series presented by sea arc boats and suzuki and the sponsors you see at the bottom the sponsors you see on the trail even if you don't use the brand even if you don't use pro guide batteries Pro Guide Batteries is a huge supporter. Sea Arc Boats, if you don't have a Sea Arc Boat, they're huge supporters of this trail of catfishing. Um, just reach out to them and say, hey, thanks for what you do. We see what you do. I might not use this product, but 
at least give them a look. You know what I mean? That's what's making Twisted Cat go in a lot of these other events. So my I big shout out to the sponsors and the people that support me and help me in the background. And uh, everybody that stays up on a Monday night watching me talk about catfish. Crazy. So, um, but yeah, I mean, you'll have to do some fishing in a boat someday. That'll be a lot of fun, I'm sure. Yes, sir. Anytime, buddy. Anytime. Probably your boat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But uh, as we roll off here again, make sure you hit the like button on this video. Subscribe to YouTube for Rhett because... I promise, Rhett, by summer, I'm going to get a thousand, sub, thousand subscribers on YouTube, which I am telling you is not easy to do. So the people like Spencer, if you're still on here with like 100,000 subscribers, dude, my hat's off to you, dude. It's tough. Uh, I think we're like at 718. I don't know, like two months ago, three months ago, we probably had 350. So it's it's a slow process, but we're slowly getting there. So, yeah, man. Thanks awesome. for being on. At, but as, as we roll off, I'm just going to, for you and everybody else, that uh, I got a Keystone Lake video on here. So I'll finish this. I'll throw this Keystone, Keystone Lake video up to watch. It's an awesome video of Keystone Lake. And that's our last event of the season that qualifies you for the championship. Uh, and then points will be posted after this podcast, too. So, Colton, you can stay on just a minute, watch this, and then we'll talk after. But Everybody else, yes, thank you. Check out this video. We'll see you next Monday. Have a good week. We're out. Awesome place, you know, our first time in Oklahoma. We're down here on Keystone Lake. Uh, 27 teams from all over. A lot of them had to come here. Had to catch some fish. And they did that. Hey, everybody. We're here at Keystone Lake here in Manfred, Oklahoma. This is a beautiful lake. Big lake, clear water. Lots of fish. We haven't seen a lot of big fish this week pre-fishing, but I think we're going to see some tournament day. Really excited for it. Everything about this event is awesome. We are here at the Harbor Grill. It's a really cool place. We got food, drinks, uh, fuel. You can dock up. Everything will be out of the Harbor Grill. So again, our, our captain's meeting will be Friday night. We're going to have everybody come, hang out, shoot bags, have some fun. Saturday morning, we're going to take off out of Harbor Grill. And then Saturday afternoon, we're going to have the weigh-in right there at Harbor Grill. Five fish limit, two over 30, three under 30. Maybe it's a solid one. That's what I call it. Seven. We're really excited to welcome Twisted Cat Outdoors to Tulsa, Oklahoma, to Keystone Lake. We've got a beautiful day today and an awesome lake. It is one of uh, Oklahoma's largest lakes. Uh, a lot of rock on the bottom, a lot of big cat out there. I think the anglers are having a really good time. This lake was really built for machines like the Sea Ark, having those big tanks, catching some big pigs out there today. It's gonna be fun to see what the anglers come back with. Going to measure all the fish with the parks ruler uh, it's a certified ruler and again it's very consistent you want to make sure that we don't have to disqualify anybody there's several anglers here that need every point they can get so uh, if an angler's out there and they're chasing points they don't even want to be close to that 30 so it'll be interesting to see uh, with these 27 teams if anybody gets disqualified i hope not but you never know it's competitive catfishing and it's the sport is on fire it's really growing fast so Really excited to see. And we also had an on the water live today. Uh, we had three boats from the tournament. They were on live with us with Glenn Thomas and the ACA. That was really fun. We did a four hour segment on that. That's something we're going to continue to do with Twisted Cat Outdoors. And we got some really fun stuff I can't even tell you about, but just wait in a few months what we got coming for you. Andy Allen and Kevin McCoy. 
$1,080 for third place with 58.30. They also had our $500 Castaway Customs Big Fish, 59.08. Brian St. Emma, Koya Sneed, $1,800. 63.74. Lance and Tyson, Lucky, Dominic, Pellegrino, $3,600. First place. It's an awesome place, you know, our first time in Oklahoma. Our definitely our first time at Keystone Lake. Um, 2017, from all over, a lot of them had to come here, had to catch some fish, and they did that. 